All right. So the first step that I want you to do in this is to set a project folder. It's just nice to keep everything organized. Let's go ahead and go to <clears throat> File, Project Window, uh, hit New. I'm going to call this one uh, Brown, Roger, and Dialog's a hard word, so if you don't know how to spell it, just call it like uh, Sound Match. Okay, give it a location. I'm going to put mine on the desktop because it's easy to find. Go ahead and hit accept. Okay, so all I've done now is I've created the project folder. I need to now go in and set the project. So I go file, set project. It's called Brown Roger Sound Match. Set the project. Okay, now I need to get Moom in. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to open up two finder windows. In the one finder window, I'm going to go to GTI Mac server, admins public folder. In the other one, I'm going to go to my project folder and the scenes. So Brown Roger match scenes, and I'm going to drag Moom from the my public folder into my scenes file. Now that's a fresh copy of Moom. I'd keep a fresh copy of Moom in your project folder. Now I come back to Maya and I open the scene and you'll notice now that because my project folder is set that Moom appears in my scenes folder. I hit open and Moom appears. Say hello to everyone Moom. <laughs> that works. Okay, uh, now I want to save the scene as Brown, Roger, Sound Match, Day one. Okay, so now I have a fresh copy of Moom in my scenes folder, and I also have um, this default rig set up, uh, saved as Brown Roger Sound Match Day One. A couple things that you need to know and do with Moom to get him ready to go. First thing is select Moom, select the little circle that surrounds Moom on the bottom at his feet. Then go to your channels box. And in your channels box, I want you to pay attention to a couple of things. Because when we go to render this out, um, these things are going to matter. So first of all, um, visibility. Obviously, if you turn visibility off, Moom disappears. So let's just go ahead and keep visibility on. Uh, global scale. So if you've created a, a scene and you want Moom to be bigger or smaller, it, you can change this value and Moom's going to get bigger or smaller based on what value you put in. But one is the default and it works that way. It's really nice when character riggers put in a global scale. Where do you get the channels box? I don't have it. The channels box is located in the upper right hand corner and it's the one with, um, well it's the one that looks like this right here. Okay, if you click that on, channels box will show up. Next you have resolution. Now, I'm not going to deal with resolution right now. I'm just going to leave them all at the defaults. But when we go to render things, we want to turn on the resolution to the highest possible sets on the body of the hand, uh, the left hand and the right hand. That way when we render it, all of our, our, our Moom character is going to be nice and smooth. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave them as the default setting, which I believe is mid, low, and low. And the reason for that is, it's just as we have a lot of different uh, actions going on, um, a lot of different things in our scene, especially if you bring in more than one copy of Moom to have two characters talking, um, it, animating becomes cumbersome if you've, cre if you've um, upped the uh, values of the, um, of the resolution. Next, you've got, you can, turn the, you can turn the head on and off. Deformation controls, you can turn those on. I would recommend leaving them off. Face panel. This is the key, critical one. This is the one I wanted to really focus on. You turn the face panel on and that gives you the face settings to work with. So now I can come in and I can lift his eyebrows and do a bunch of other stuff. The last one on the list is extra head controls. You can leave those off. 
The next thing I want to do is I need to turn on the rest of the body controls. Because although I'm going to have you focus on the face itself uh, for the dialogue, uh, if when you get done with doing just the dialogue, you're going to pose Moom in, you know, in the scene. So we need to be able to have control of his hands, his arms, his legs. So we go click Moom one more time. Actually, I lied. You don't need to click on Moom. Just in your channels box, down here you see where it says right controls, mid controls, and left controls. These are, these are layers similar to what you would see in Photoshop. You can turn them on and off, and they really they help to organize your scene. Right now I want to turn the visibility on. So I'm going to click once on the left box that's the, that'll bring in where it says V, and that's visibility. So that gives me control to now take my the foot, the feet, and to move them up and down, side to side, rotate it, okay, and, it, and each one of these controls does something separate, okay, so that moves the hand. Now, before we get too far, I want, if, if you notice that the right hand and the left hand, or the right hand and the left hand are doing different things. This one has two circles and this one doesn't. What it is, is it's a, uh, the way that the rigger set it up, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's just the way that he defaulted to show that you have both controls, but he's given you um, the ability to switch between inverse kinematics and forward kinematics. Now inverse kinematics, the left hand here is set up with inverse kinematics. What it lets me do is when I move the bottom joint, the rest of the joints follow suit. So I can, when I, so when I move the hand, it moves the elbow and the shoulder for me. In forward kinematics, you have to move each joint individually. So I'd have to move the hand, and then the elbow, and then the shoulder. Now each one of those has its value. Uh, in forward kinematics gives you more control. Invert uh, over each joint and allows you to, to kind of do some unnatural stuff with your, your character. It, it, it's really nice for precise animation. But IKs are really nice because they, they let you to um, animate the character fairly quickly using just the, the uh, overall controls. Okay, um, So I need to turn inverse kinematics on for my right hand arm and that's found in this R down in the bottom the little section that says the little um, on, on the little circle the thing that says R if I click on that you notice that in the channels I have an arm switch and a leg switch so that allows me to switch them to, I, to IKs or FKs I want them to be IKs so I just drop down from the menu and click IK so now I have IK IK and now I can move this guy the same way I moved my left hand Okay, a couple of other things to note about rigged characters. And why I like Moom so much is I have an overall hand control, but then if you come in and look, I have finger controls as well. Now you notice that with the finger controls, if I go to Q, or I mean W, it's grayed out, E, it's grayed out, and R is grayed out. That means that I can't move, rotate, or scale any of the individual controls. Well, then why is that control there? I'll tell you, it's uh, because you can control it through the channels box. To do that, so I'm just going to click the entire, I'm going to do the entire hand and then I'll show you how to do just the little individual fingers. But if I select the entire hand and I come to my channels box, you notice that I have more than just my translate, rotate, and scale. I've got a, v a value that says curl, scrunch, relax, uh, cone, spread, mid spread, ring spread, thumb spread, twist, and lean. Each one of those controls allows me to do something different to the hand. So for instance, curl. If I want to curl the hand, I can come in and type in a value and hope that it works. But instead, I'm going to do the value on the fly. So uh, I click the word curl. I literally click on the word curl. Okay, You click the word, you notice it's highlighted. Then I come out to my camera view, and I middle mouse click and drag left and drag right. And that allows me to adjust the values on the fly. So if I have no idea that 0.5 does this, makes the hand look like this, I can just middle mouse click left and right till I get the view that I'm looking for. So right there, that's great. I've curled it up a little bit. Then I want maybe I want to go to relax and just relax the hand a little. Maybe I want to go to cone. I don't know what cone does. 
Well, apparently that's what cone it. does. Spread, spread out the fingers a little bit. Then I can also come in and take the individual finger and I can uncurl it, straighten it out a little bit. And you see I've bend A, B, C, D. Those are the different joints. So that's joint A, joint B, joint C, and I don't know what joint D does. Oh, it's the very, very tippy tip, tippy, uh, tip of it. Okay, and then to keyframe the values, I select the frame I want, I select the control I want to keyframe, and I hit S. So now that's keyframed. So I could come over a few frames, take this, take the curl, bend it back down, and hit S. And now between those two frames, Moom's going to tap his finger. Okay, now the reason we're only doing dialogue to start out with is you can, I think you can start to see how complicated this can get. I mean, it, it, there's six controls just to tap the finger. But rather than get you overwhelmed, we're going to just work on the face settings. And if you kind of get this in, in line here, these controls here, let me change where his eyes go. You can even adjust this value so that it, one eye looks up and one eye looks down. So it's all cartoony. This is the chin control. This is the mouth control, the jaw control. These are the lips. This is the cheeks. Or uh, I guess the in and out of the lips. Okay. Um, here's your eyebrow, your eyebrow controls. Eyelid. Eyelid controls. Sorry, these are your eyebrow like controls. An evil scientist. This is your head. You can kind of squash it down a little bit. Okay. Some other things here is face settings. Um, he head size. I can actually change the size of the head from a value of 0 to a value of 1. Ears are not turned on, so I go to ears and I turn them on. Nose, I can turn the nose on. Front teeth, I can turn them off if I don't want them. Inside teeth, I can do uh, upper and lower teeth. Okay, so I can make the ears big, I can make the nose big, um, the tongue, I can turn the tongue on, and then right here, now this is the tongue, so this is, um, this is in and out, so I can stick the tongue out, and then, okay. That's really creepy. Yes, it is. Okay, so now to do the dialogue, you've got to find your piece of dialogue. I, um, I've got uh, one from the Muppets that I like using because it's on my computer, I don't have to go searching for it. So I can go into music and go to Muppets, open up the Muppets original soundtrack. That's not what I intended on doing, but... Let's try this again. I'm not used to the new Muppets, uh, or the new iTunes yet. There we go. Okay, um, so right here. Studios, I can't believe it. <laughs> so I get the sound file, and I literally just click and I drag it into my timeline. Just like that. Stoot, Muppet, Stoot, Muppet, Stoot, Muppet, Stoot. Okay, if I want to play it slower, I come to the little running man, and I drop down and I choose halftime. Yes, it's Muppet Stew. It's delicious. Um, now I can increase the time. I can increase the timeline here to give me a hundred frames. Okay. Now what I like to do, I want to. I like doing it one word at a time. So I'm going to drop this down to where I only hear the word Muppet. So I just drag this, and I'm going to come down, drag it down, and I think if you look at the wavelength, I think it's just ten. It's ten. Okay, so I'm going to start the M sound on about frame 5. So how do you do this? Okay, well I have dialogue papers over there that you can grab one and look at that it actually has the consonants and the vowels and you can match that guy's character. Um, that's been really, really effective. That, um, uh, that Preston Blair is very, very good. Um, if you want to have a little more fun, which I like having a little more fun, go to Photo Booth. Click on the little film reel. Get yourself nice and centered so that you look handsome or, or beautiful, whatever. 
Hey, sexy guy. Um, and I and I'll open up the file in iTunes and hit repeat. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. Then I'll hit record. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. And I might try it three or four different ways. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. Muppet, Muppet Studios, Studios, I can't believe it. <laughs> Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. So you can play it however you want. I can't believe So now I've now I've got photo booth. I can come up here. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. So let's try it three or four different ways. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. Muppet Studios, I can't believe it. Okay, so I'm gonna go with that one. And I'm just gonna scroll down and look at my crazy self. That's that's my M sound. So I'm going to come over and maybe put this in the corner. Oh, you know, take my uh, slide it over a little bit. Okay, I'm going to keep this in the corner and just w look at my face and try to match that face. So I'll come to Moom. Apparently I've got his head smashed down too much. Okay, and I want to take and bring the tongue in cuz there's no tongue in this. Um, I need to take his mouth, his jaw, and close his jaw. Take the the lips and close the lips. Okay, and let me open up his eyes for now. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Come on. There we go. Okay. Um, looking at me, my my cheeks are actually pulled that down a little bit. So I'm going to come and try to just pull this, pull those in just a just a slight amount. And you know what? That's pretty close. I might even I might pucker my lip out a little bit, like so. Well, no, we'll keep that. I want to keep that one kind of neutral. Do you look really creepy? Well, you know, it is how it is. I highlight all the face settings and hit S. So now that's my mmm. And now as I listen. So right here, he starts with the uh sound. So I'm going to come over to my video and just scroll over. I can't believe it. Studio. Okay, so that's real subtle. So I'm going to come in and just... And, and remember, you can always come back and refine it. So if I just want to do the up and down of the mouth, great. Do the up and down of the mouth, set the keyframes, and then come back and do the lips if you want. So I'm going to do that, highlight everything, and hit S. And then right after that, I need to go to the My P sound. It's studio. Oh, so if you want to save the Muppet entire space, at that point you have to highlight the whole thing. Correct. So there's my uh, and then there's my sound. So my puss sound is not too, uh, not unlike my mm sound. So I'm going to highlight that and hit S. So now... <laughs> and you just repeat that until you have all the words done. And then once the words are done, you go back and refine the face, and then you can move the arms, hands, legs, and talk. When I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you with more than just my mouth. I'm talking to you with my hands, I'm doing all these dumb gestures, but all of that stuff is in there as well. So that's the assignment, and uh, hopefully you can glean some stuff from that. Find your own audio clip, uh, moviewaves.com is very, very good. Um, and remember to pull a fresh copy of Moom off the server. Make sure you save early, save often. If you screw up, delete Moom and create a new one.